It's been a roller coaster of a season so far for Kentucky basketball, and it all comes down to this. This is how far we think the Wildcats are going to make it in the NCAA tournament. You are locked on Kentucky. Your daily podcast on the Kentucky Wildcats. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. All right, what's going on, Big Blue Nation? Welcome on into Locked On Kentucky, your daily Kentucky Wildcats podcast. I'm your host, Lance Daw. On today's episode of Locked On Kentucky, we are going to be predicting the entire NCAA tournament, going to be taking a very close look at Kentucky's path. How far will UK make it in March Madness? Going to give you that answer on today's episode. Thank you so much for making Locked On Kentucky your first listen every single day. Want to remind everyone out there that we are free and available on all platforms. If you are watching on YouTube or listening on podcast, please subscribe to the show. And I will remind you guys one final time. You can check this out in the description below. You can click on the link to join the Locked On Kentucky ESPN Bracket Challenge. Got, I believe, 138 people in there right now, which is super, super awesome. Thank you so much for joining up. If you have, if you haven't already, it's free. Join the bracket pool. It's going to be a really, really fun time over there. So today we are going to be previewing the entire NCAA tournament. Again, taking a specific look at Kentucky basketball's path. We will start here. We're just going to go ahead and tip this off. We are going to start here in the east region of the bracket. As you can see, I have already selected UConn to advance to the second round over Stetson. If you're watching on YouTube, you can see this. If you're listening on podcasts, would highly encourage you to pull this up yourself. Even if you are watching on YouTube, get, get your printed bracket. Go and pull this up yourself and just follow along here. And let me know, which teams you're picking in the comments below, and let me know which upsets really excite you potentially this season. So we're starting here with UConn winning in the round of 64 over Stetson. Then we've got eight-seeded Florida Atlantic and nine-seed Northwestern. I am going to be taking the Florida Atlantic Owls, a little bit more volatile than the Northwestern Wildcats, who have a really strong guard in Boo Booey, but I am going to be taking FAU Final Four member from a season ago. San Diego State and UAB, I think this is kind of a fun matchup here. UAB with a really solid front court presence. San Diego State, though, Jaden Ledee, excellent, excellent guard out of the Mountain West. I think he is going to propel the San Diego State Aztecs to a round of 32 berth. Auburn versus Yale. Yale kind of scraped in after Brown absolutely sold in the uh, in the Ivy League championship. I'm going to be taking Auburn here. Very, very strong four seed according to not me, but a variety of other people. BYU and Duquesne, going to be taking BYU here to move on to the next round. And then you've got Illinois and Moorhead State. I am going to be taking Illinois to advance to the round of 32. Washington State and Drake, great story, by the way, out of the the Pac-12 here with Washington State. Miles Rice, who suffered from lymphoma, uh, recently overcame it and was able to get back onto the court as a lymphoma. I'm sorry, I mispronounced that. Was able to come back onto the court uh, as a freshman for the Washington State Cougars, and he has been absolutely balling out for them. Really strong guard backcourt as a whole for the Cougs. Uh, I think they are going to be really fun. Unfortunately, they got matched up against 10 seeded Drake, who according to Haslametrics and according to a couple of other computer sites, uh, has a really good chance to win this game. So I am actually going to be taking the Drake Bulldogs. I think this will be a really fun contest, one that I think could go to overtime. I'm pulling for Miles Rice. I think Drake as a whole is probably a better team here, so I'm going to be taking the Bulldogs. Moving on here to South Dakota State, Iowa State. Iowa State coming off of that massive victory over Houston in the Big 12 title game. Dominant, dominant victory. Going to be taking the Cyclones here. Back up to the top, UConn and FAU. I'm going to be taking the Huskies to advance to the Sweet 16, as well as Auburn over San Diego State. BYU and Illinois, here's where I'm going to pick my first major upset. BYU over three-seed Illinois. I'm not a big fan of the way that Illinois has been playing defense so far this season. I understand that they just won the Big Big Ten uh, championship there uh, in their conference tournament. I'm just not a big fan of the way that they play defense down the stretch. I understand that Terrence Shannon Jr., 
and company are really, really good at scoring a rock, the rock. Very, very efficient offense there. Um, but I like BYU in an upset pick, um, partially just because I kind of feel like it and partially just because I like BYU as a team. And then Drake and Iowa State, I am going to be taking Drake, actually, to win this game here over Iowa State. The Cyclones, really, really good defensively. I think we've talked about this on a recent episode of Locked On Kentucky where I discussed how I felt about the Cyclones and the way that they played so far this season. Of course, they're a really, really good team. Of course, they're playing very well right now. But there have been moments so far this season where when they haven't been able to churn opponents over, they have really struggled. Drake, I think, is going to be the 10 seed here to make it to the, to the Sweet 16 in the Big Dance. I'm going to be taking Drake here to move on. UConn and Auburn, this is a super tough matchup. This could end up being a national championship matchup if Auburn was seeded in another region of the bracket, at least according to Vegas odds and according to uh, most uh, most analysts out there that are kind of putting out their Final Fours right now. I'm taking UConn, though. UConn just way too good uh, for, for the Auburn Tigers here in the Sweet 16. And I'm going to be taking BYU to advance to the Sweet, to the Elite Eight, rather. And, of course, UConn to the Final Four. All right, so now we're going to move on to Kentucky's region uh, in the NCAA tournament. Should be very, very interesting here to see what the Kentucky Wildcats do. I'm going to give my thoughts and tell you how far they are going to make it in this region in just a second. Before I do that, though, I do want to tell you guys about our friends over at Better Together. Tired of the same old daily fantasy grind with football or basketball, it does seem to get a bit repetitive, where you make a roster, cross your fingers, and just kind of hope for the best, or losing on the last leg of your pick em entry, making it really, really frustrating sometimes. Well, you need to check out Better Together, the first cooperative daily fantasy platform where teamwork trumps talent, and you can play with your friend and not, or, and not against them. It's really, really awesome what you're able to do with Better Together, where you can kind of pick and choose different things with your friends instead of having to go head-to-head against them. You can pick more or less on real-time player stats, strategize with your partner to boost your odds, and climb to the leaderboard together. So grab a friend and join the social DFS movement. Download Better Together now from the App Store. Sign up using promo code LOCKEDON for a chance to win your share of over $1,000 in cash prizes. Remember the code locked on because winning alone is fun, but it's better together. Today's episode is also brought to you by eBay Motors. Passion, drive, and patience. What brings home the winning trophy is also what keeps your number one ride or die alive. And eBay Motors has you covered everything you need to maintain your vehicle, leveled up to peak performance from superchargers, roof racks, exhaust kits, LED headlights, and more. Whether you're into speed, power, or style, eBay Motors, again, they've got you covered. With over 122 million parts for your number one ride or die, you'll find exactly what you're looking for every single time. And with eBay Guaranteed Fit, your part is guaranteed to fit your ride every time or your money back because with eBay Motors, you're burning rubber, not cash. With all the parts you need at the prices you want, it's easy to turn your car into the MVP and bring home that win. You can keep your ride or die alive at ebaymotors.com. Eligible items only. Exclusions apply. eBay guaranteed fit. Only available to U.S. customers. All right, continuing along here on the Wednesday edition of Locked On Kentucky. Lance Dahl hanging out here with you. If you have not checked out the, uh, the Locked On Kentucky ESPN Bracket Challenge. I would highly encourage you guys to go ahead and do that. Link is in the description. Free to join. Got almost 140 people in there. It may already be 140 people by the time this episode uh, is published. Predicting the NCAA tournament. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm going to go ahead and get on here to Kentucky's region, the south region of the bracket. I can't believe I forgot already that's the south and not the Midwest. For some reason, I thought Kentucky was in the Midwest region uh, earlier this week. Not as far as like the different teams they were playing against, just as far as the name of the region. So, here we have Houston and Longwood at the top. Not even going to think about it. Houston over Longwood, the 16 seed. 8-9 matchup here with Nebraska and Texas A&M. I'm going to take Texas A&M to win their first game against Nebraska. Really, really like Nebraska's guard play. Overall, they're a more balanced team, according to Kim Palm, but Texas A&M really likes to rough things up, and man, although they are not statistically efficient against anybody not named the Kentucky Wildcats, I think they're going to be able to drag 
a win out of the mud here against the Cornhuskers. James Madison and Wisconsin going to be going with JMU over the Wisconsin Badgers. And then I'm also going to be taking Duke over Vermont. Texas Tech and NC State, this is a game that I have gone back and forth on for days now, trying to decide whether or not I do go with NC State, the hot hand coming out of their, their conference tournament. Really, really solid play from DJ Burns. Do we see them overcome Texas Tech, who played in a much more difficult conference and I think is a little bit more balanced and just better on both sides of the ball? I am going to go with the hot hand. I'm going to say NC State wins this game. I don't feel great about it, but I'm going to rock with it. And ladies and gentlemen, here we get to the first round game against Oakland. The Kentucky Wildcats going up against the Golden Grizzlies. As I said on Sunday, on paper, I think, and it, it, this is this is going to be hilarious. This is going to be really, really funny uh, if Kentucky ends up losing this game and I just get proven dead wrong. This is, I think, Kentucky's best outcome for their first for, for their first game. I think that this was the weakest 14 seed on paper that they could have played. With that being said, they've got a couple of really good three point shooters. They're interesting in certain spots, but they don't pose threats. Uh, they, they or they don't pose threats rather in like the most important areas to Kentucky. As far as rebounding, turning opponents over. Holding teams to low field goal percentages, especially from outside the arc. I think Kentucky is going to be able to pace and space their way to a victory. And all you got to do at a hit neutral site is hit just enough shots from the outside. I think Kentucky's going to be able to do that. I think they're going to be able to focus up here. Wildcats, I believe, to open the first round of the NCAA tournament. I think they're going to get a win here over Oakland. Florida against Boise State. Or Colorado, personally, I think that Florida is a really, really good team. So far this year on offense, they've been phenomenal. Two really good guards in Zion Pullen and Walter Clayton Jr. I think they're going to be either Boise or Colorado. I would guess, I would venture a guess that Boise will lose that game to the Buffaloes. And so it'll be Florida versus Colorado in that first round of 64 matchup after the play-in game there. Um, that's just my guess here. But uh, we'll, we'll just have to see what happens. Marquette and Western Kentucky. I'm taking Marquette over the uh, Western Kentucky Hilltoppers. Houston over Texas A&M. And then I will have Duke facing off against James, Ma or excuse me, against Houston in the, uh, in, the, in the Sweet 16. I've got Kentucky advancing, and then I've got Marquette advancing as well. Actually, if I'm not mistaken... And the bracket, I'm look because I've got one on paper here that I did. Actually, no, I did end up taking JMU to advance over the Duke Blue Devils to the Elite Eight. I've got Kentucky beating Marquette in this in this Sweet 16 matchup. I've got Kentucky defeating NC State uh, after uh, after the Wolfpack stormed into the NCAA tournament. I think I think just based on the matchup. Kentucky's guards are going to be able to outperform what NC State wants to do in the front court. That is just my prediction. I think Kentucky is going to be able to lock in in that game and get what should be a pretty close win. And then in the game against Marquette, I've said this about the Big East. I think I said it on Sunday again. It's a good conference. But from Marquette down, you really start to question the strength of it, especially after looking at how the committee handled it. And I know that there were some things that the committee did really wrong with this bracket. I think that the way they handled the Big East, upon further reflection, is probably the best way to go. Getting three teams in. Um, could you have argued for a fourth? Maybe. But St. John, Seton Hall, not really sure if they deserve to be in over a couple of different teams. And the Kentucky Wildcats against Shaka Smart, who has not made it past the round of 32, I believe, since his t Final Four trip with the VCU Rams in way back in, what, 2011? I think Kentucky, for the first time in forever, what feels like forever, they're going to make it to the Elite Eight, and they will take on the Houston Cougars. Houston is a really, really, really solid team. Defensively, they've got a lot going on. Offensively, they've got some excellent experienced guards in Jamal Shedd and LJ Cryer, a Baylor transfer. This is a rock-solid team. Showing... That performance against Iowa State in the Big 12 tournament really proved 
to me, something that I didn't think to be true. Houston is human. They are mortal. Kentucky, a team that has been extremely volatile all season long, I think could get a win here. They could absolutely win against this Houston team. But again, Houston is disciplined. They are smart. They are aggressive. They are physical. They're not tall. They've got some smaller pieces on this team. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the reason why I think that the Kentucky Wildcats are going to advance to the Final Four. I think Kentucky is going to be able against two really, really good guards that Houston has. I think Shepard, Dillingham, Reeves, they will be able to get it done. That will be the answer to Kentucky basketball's questions. It will be those three players in a game like this, in a game against Marquette, and so the Kentucky Wildcats, I believe, will advance to the Final Four. So we've got UConn. We've got Kentucky here in our first half of the Final Four. We're going to dive into the West and Midwest regions of the bracket, and then we're going to give our national championship prediction here in just a little bit. Before I do that, though, I do want to tell you guys about our friends over at Nissan. This week's March Madness Bracket Highlight is brought to you by our friends at Nissan. Each week, we're picking one team that stands out, a team that's pushed it further than the rest, just like any of the all-new 2024 Nissan SUVs. These guys were able to take it to the next level. How about we shout out the Oregon Ducks? They are obviously this week's Nissan Rogue. This team absolutely surprised us all with a powerful performance in the final Pac-12 tournament, punching their ticket to the big dance. They say, win life, go rogue, and that's exactly what the Ducks have done here. You can take the Nissan Rogue, Nissan Pathfinder, or Nissan Armada and go find your next big adventure. You can shop all of the new 2024 Nissan SUVs over at NissanUSA.com. Again, that is NissanUSA.com. All right, wrapping up the Wednesday edition of Locked On Kentucky Lance Dahl, breezing through the bracket here with you. If you have not subscribed to the show already, I would greatly appreciate it if you went ahead and did so. Let me know what you think about Kentucky basketball in the comments below. Will they make the Final Four? Are you more skeptical than I am here? Because over the past, I would say like 24, 48 hours, somewhere between 30, we'll just say 36, I have been buying in to Kentucky basketball's guards. The youth on this team, sure, you can say one thing about it. But when Kentucky plays these really important games, I think they're going to focus up. It is about whether or not they can get past that that first-round game against Oakland, a team they should beat, a team that they're better than, and a team that has some pieces that could cause some problems. Oakland, by the way, throughout this season, whenever they've played tough non-con competition or they played really good teams in their conference, they have played up. They have played really well and made those games competitive. Kentucky has to be able to shut that down, and if they can't shut it down, find a way to win in the end. And if they can do that, I think this team, similar to Miami of last year, is going to be able to go on a run. I guess another question I would ask you guys, do you think that going to the Final Four is enough for Coach Cal and this team? Is that enough for the Wildcats? Let me know in the comments below, because we'll, we'll, get, to, we'll get to where I think they're going here in just a little bit. Obviously, though, we got to go through these two regions of the bracket. We've got the West and the Midwest regions. Let's start here with the West. I've got North Carolina over 16 seeded Wagner, Mississippi State, and Michigan State. May be a little bit of SEC bias here. I think in Mississippi State is going to be able to figure out how to get it done for one game. And they will cause North Carolina lots of trouble. They will cause problems in that matchup. St. Mary's and Grand Canyon. Give me St. Mary's, and then Alabama and Charleston. Give me Alabama. Although there's a very real world where Alabama loses that game. Clemson and New Mexico. I think right now the consensus, it's like a 62% uh, percent lean towards the Clemson Tigers to win this game. I'm picking New Mexico. They won their conference tournament. The Mountain West, I think, is significantly underrated like way, way, way underrated relative to what other people are saying about how just how this conference will perform in the tournament period. I think they let us down a little bit last year. I'm going to say they don't do it two years in a row. Jamal Mashburn's son, I'm not betting against him. I'm going with New Mexico to win this first game. And then Baylor, I think, is going to go over Colgate. Colgate, uh, everybody wants to talk about, oh, it's a really good three-point shooting team. It was a really good three-point shooting team in conference play. 
How they play against Baylor is going to be another story. Now, you could see Colgate win this game, and this is another one of those 50-50 ones like the NC NC State-Texas Tech game for me because of the fact that Baylor doesn't play great defense. This feels iffy to me. I'm going to take the Bears. I'm going to go with my gut here and say that they find a way to win, but this one's tough. This one's tough. Dayton and Nevada, I don't really have to think much about this. I think Nevada's going to win this game. Dayton, really, really solid front court presences, but Nevada playing in Utah for this one. And also Dayton, interesting uh, note here. The Dayton Flyers have not won a single game against anybody in this tournament field. So I'm going to take Nevada. Arizona against the Wolf Pack in the round of 32. I think this Mississippi State-North Carolina matchup is severely underrated. I think this one could end up being tough. I'm going to take UNC, and then I'm going to take Alabama over St. Mary's. I think Alabama may swamp St. Mary's. I think that may just be a bad matchup. Baylor and New Mexico taking the Lobos. Ladies and gentlemen, I am taking the Lobos to go on to the Sweet 16 here against the Arizona Wildcats. I will also take North Carolina over Alabama, and then I will take Arizona over New Mexico, and then I'm going to take Arizona to win the West region of this bracket. Let me know what you think about a relatively chalk region in the comments below because we're going to get to this little chaos region right here. This is where I think some things start to go awry. Purdue, I think, beats the 16 seed unlike they did unlike they did last year. I am taking TCU over Utah State in what should be a phenomenal 8-9 matchup against a very, very good Utah State team. I just There are a couple pieces for TCU that I'm just having a hard time getting past. I think TCU ends up winning this game but closely. Gonzaga against McNeese State. A lot of people are picking Shahada Shahada Wells and McNeese to win this one. I'm going to go with the Zags. I'm going to take the Zags. And I. it's so funny with the Kansas and Samford game. So Samford, pretty good offense overall. I think they would they would have given Kansas problems regardless. And I've been telling people, I'm picking this upset. I'm picking Samford to beat Kansas. But it was just announced earlier today that Kevin McCuller, one of the star players for the for the Jayhawks, is not going to be available. Not going to be available for the NCAA tournament, which is making this a more and more obvious upset pick. I'm not saying it's like definitively going to happen. Kansas, they could still win this game by 30. They still have Hunter Dickinson. Um, but but Samford, I think, is going to move on there. South Carolina, Oregon. This is a 6-11 matchup that I may lose sleep over. I'm taking the Gamecocks, and I don't feel great about it. Creighton and Akron going to be taking the Blue Jays there. Texas and UVA or Colorado State. I said to multiple people, Colorado State's going to win that game against Virginia, and then they're going to win that game against Texas. As of right now, (laughs) I just pulled it up on my phone. Colorado State is beating Virginia 37 to 18, 15 minutes left, not in the first half, in the game. Virginia scored 18 points. In 25 minutes, holy cow. So that's what I have written on my printed bracket here um, for Colorado State to advance, but makes me feel really good. Uh, Tennessee St. Peter's. Tennessee St. Peter's. Ladies and gentlemen, I just want you all in the comments below. Tell me, are you picking St. Peter's? Are you really going to pick them to do it? Going to pick them to do it against Tennessee? I know a lot of you are going to, despite Tennessee being a two-seed. I know a lot of you are going to do it, and I and I and I, I just want to be clear. I hope you do it. I absolutely hope you do it. I'm going to take Tennessee here, and I'm going to root as hard as I can for the St. Peter's Peacocks. Purdue and TCU. Let's go Purdue here over TCU. Samford and Gonzaga. I'm going to go with Samford over the other pair of Bulldogs. Just a chaos pick here. Nothing other than just straight vibes. It'll be super funny if Sanford loses in this first round and loses badly. It'll just take out this whole region where Gonzaga could easily, you know, go on and 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 make the Final Four, for that matter. South Carolina, Creighton. I think Creighton's going to win that game. I think Colorado State is going to beat Tennessee. I think Colorado State will beat Tennessee. And we're going to get Creighton and Purdue here. 
in this Elite Eight. And I'm going to take Purdue, even though a lot of people are probably not going to be particularly excited about them uh, making a run in the tournament. I'm going to be taking the Boilermakers here. And then we have our final four. And this is where we're going to wrap up the show. You've got UConn and Arizona. I'm just going to be, I'm just going to be straightforward with you guys. Part of me wants to try and compete in this bracket pool. So that's why I've got a couple of one seeds in here. You could absolutely make the case for Houston if you don't think that Kentucky's going to make this Final Four. But you've got Kentucky versus Purdue. Purdue has choked in the tournament. Kentucky hasn't really been in the position to choke outside of that one year with Oscar Shibway over the past, like, five seasons. This year, I think they're going to make it pretty far. And if they get to this point against a team like Purdue, who has just an overwhelming inside presence, you're going to see a lot of points scored in this game. You're going to see a ton of points scored back and forth. But I think that Purdue and Zach Eady will eventually find a way to get it done in what could be an overtime close to 100 points per e- for each team thriller. This is where I think Kentucky's road ends. In the Final Four, one game away from facing off against UConn. And I think the Huskies are going to go back-to-back. As do a lot of different people. This is not anything special. This is just kind of there. I do feel very confidently about... um, I feel very confidently about these upset picks. I think Colorado State to the Sweet 16 is fun. I think New Mexico to the Sweet 16 is really fun. I think that you could also see a world where somebody like a Moorhead State makes a run to like the Elite Eight or something insane like that. Um, Just because I went relatively chalk here does not mean that things aren't possible. Uh, As we've seen over the past two years, there's been a lot of really, really chaotic brackets um, that have occurred uh, with, 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 again, and, and wins against some really, really good teams uh, for that matter. So let me know what you think in the comments below. Will the K- Kentucky Wildcats get on the doorstep of a national championship? That's where I've got them. What is your bracket looking like? Who are some of the big time upsets that you're looking for? You can leave all of that in the comments below. And that's going to do it for today's episode of Locked On Kentucky. You can follow the show on Twitter at Locked On UK. Follow me on Twitter at Lance Dahl underscore and follow the show over on Instagram at Kentucky Podcast. Any questions, comments, concerns, leave those in the YouTube comments below. Hit me on the socials. I will see you all tomorrow for another episode of Locked On Kentucky. Hope you guys have a great rest of your day and God bless. Bye.